Hey everybody, so I'm out at my sawmill shed and I wanted to make a video to talk about how this lumber has performed. And uh, you remember back uh, eight, eight and a half, nine months ago, <clears throat> I made a video walking through the construction of this sawmill shed, which was built primarily of green southern yellow pine lumber. And I talked about coming back in a few months and seeing how all that lumber behaved. And so we're kind of at that point now where uh, we want to look at this because when you're building stuff with green lumber you do have to be concerned with shrinkage and splitting and and uh, other effects as that lumber seasons and dries um, and so i want to start by talking about the framing lumber generally when you're framing with green lumber you don't have to worry too much about anything that's about an inch and a half or thicker uh, it's generally not going to split on you the one thing uh, you do have to worry about though is when you have connections where beams meet posts, you want to accommodate some settling here so that as that beam shrinks, uh, you don't develop a huge gap between the beam and the post. And so one way to do that is to use gusset plates. And you can either oversize your holes in the plate or the wood, or you can wallow them out and kind of oval them so that you allow things to settle down and slip and so that that beam can stay um, on top of the post and and that's worked out well here. Uh, it's it's done uh, That on both ends all the other framing lumber looks great. I don't see any cracks or splitting or uh, Settling issues boards have stayed tight against each other where they're supposed to um, And so that looks good and you know that kind of confirms when you're talking about the the thicker lumber um, You're generally pretty safe uh, using green wood for that where there's a bigger concern though is your siding and generally if you're talking about boards that are an inch or thinner uh, you do have to worry about all kinds of things when it's green lumber you have to worry about shrinkage and splitting and cracks uh, because those boards won't be able to resist those effects because they're so thin so let's start here on the outside um, if you're going to be siding with green lumber, the board and batten method is really the preferred way to go. It, it originated to deal with all the issues you run into with green lumber. And the way I did mine, uh, so you see there's a row of fasteners here. Behind this row is a wall girt. And for each board, I came in dead center on the board and put in two uh, ring shank galvanized siding nails with a nail gun. And that's the only place these boards are nailed, down the middle. There are no nails on the edges of the boards because we want to allow those edges to shrink in as that board dries out. We don't want to constrain that. If we had put nails on the edges of these boards, when they go to shrink, they're going to split and, and cause cracking. And so here we only nail the board uh, right down the center. Then we come back in. And these battens I fastened down with a about a three inch uh, star drive deck screw. Those screws go through the joint between your adjacent boards. So they also are not going to constrain these boards as they want to shrink. And the, these, you know, get screwed down tight. And so they're going to help hold in the edge of the boards and cover up uh, that joint. And if we come around to the inside, now here you can see, you know, when I when I had put these boards up, I butted them up as tight as I possibly could. And you can see there's some pretty substantial uh, gaps here now. I mean, the gaps generally range from about 3 16th of an inch to a quarter of an inch. But um, over here, we've got some really big gaps. These are about a 3 8 of an inch uh, wide. Um, and that's to be expected. But you know what we see here is that the board and batten method worked like it's supposed to we don't we, we have substantial shrinkage but we didn't get any uh, splitting or cracking and you don't see any daylight in these gaps because the batten is still covering up that joint so uh, it worked out really well um, you can get a better view if we come up here and look at the uh, front edge where we see the siding coming down and you can see the boards and the battens and you can see, you know, the gaps in there, um, pretty substantial gaps, but they're behind the battens, and so they're not a big deal. Now, one, one other thing I want to talk about here, and this is important, when you put your siding board down, you want to look at the grain rings, the growth rings on the end of the board, and you want to flip that board so that those rings are smiling to the outside of the building, okay? 
And that's really, really gonna help. That's very important. So remember that, put the boards on so that there's, the rings are smiling outward. What that's gonna do is if, as this board dries, if it has a tendency to want to warp or, or cup or crown, this orientation of the grain is gonna cause it to crown outward. But because we nail it down the center, it's not gonna be able to. We've held that center down um, to, to the framing. And as it tries to crown, instead of the center coming up, it's actually gonna push the edges in tighter and um, push the board in really tighter against the building. Um, and uh, that, that's gonna further help stability of your, your siding. If you had flipped this so that the rings were smiling inward, um, then this board is going to want to cup outward. And remember, we don't have nails on the edges of the board because we want that to be able to float and, and, and move. Uh, if it tried to cup, then there's nothing to prevent that board from cupping outward except your battens. It's going to put uneven pressure on the battens. Say if this board wanted to cup, but this one didn't, it's going to twist these battens. And that's when things start to get unstable and uh, start to look really bad. And so just remember that when you're putting up your boards, have that grain smiling outwards, and that will further enhance stability of your siding. And you can see I, I did that. Once in a while, I'll forget, but I guess I was paying attention up here. I hadn't started uh, afternoon beer yet, so I uh, got all of these with the grain smiling out and things, things look good. So I think that's it for today. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, below and I'll be happy to uh, reply. And thanks for watching.